Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be going over the AP Physics 1 exam review for kinematics. So this is going to cover everything you need to know uh, for the exam in terms of kinematics. And this includes projectiles. And I have a couple other videos that have questions that range in difficulty from easy to hard. Um, so after this one, after reviewing all the content, I suggest you try those questions. Um, so you know, let's just get right into the review. So the first thing we have to recognize is just some basic things regarding uh, physics foundation. And so we need to be able to recognize the difference between a vector and a scalar. So vectors have both magnitude or, or size and a direction. Um, so example of that would be displacement, velocity, momentum. Now scalars are quantities that only have magnitude. And so that's stuff you don't have to specify direction for, like speed, energy, distance. Um, so now when you're adding these vectors, there may be some problems that show up in terms of testing your knowledge on adding, adding vectors. Um, you need to add vectors from head to tail and also include the direction. And the more important part of vectors um, in terms of the actual exam is being able to break them apart into components. So once you break them apart into components, you want to use the Pythagorean theorem um, to analyze it. So here's an example. Let's say we had a ball that was launched with 20 meters uh, per second of initial velocity. Because the force of gravity is acting upon the y direction but not the x direction, it affects it differently. So in order to analyze its motion, what you need to do is break it apart and do its components. Um, you know the angle measure, presumably, and then you can just use trig to find the different velocities uh, just like that. All right, so now let's get into some of the actual motion stuff for kinematics. So the first thing is distance, which is represented by D, but sometimes it can just be written as um, D for displacement like this. So sometimes you can write displacement like that with um, like that. Um, but more traditional way to represent displacement is just D with an arrow over it to show direction. So distance is scalar, well displacement is a vector and that represents change in position, right? So that is otherwise known as final position versus minus initial position. Uh, so an easy way to think about that is, let's say you had a guy and he walked forward 10 steps and then walked backwards five steps his total distance traveled would be 15 steps, but his displacement, which is change in position, would be five steps. Um, speed is distance over time. Velocity is change in position over time or displacement over time. And acceleration is just how fast your velocity is changing over time. And there are the different units, which are represented as meters per second for velocity and meters per second squared for acceleration. Um, Motion graphs, you need to know how to interpret these graphs, and I just have one example here um, where you can see the position is exponentially increasing, right? Um, so in contrast to that, you have that velocity over time graph that's going to uh, be increasing at a constant rate. And so because you're increasing your velocity each increment of time, what we're going to get is the exponentially increasing position, right? You're getting faster each time, and therefore your position is going to change exponentially. Now your acceleration is based off your velocity versus time graph, just like your um, velocity is based off the position over time graph, and that's represented by the slope. So the slope of the position versus time graph is your velocity, the slope of the velocity versus time graph is your acceleration, and then you want to work backwards from that, which is analyzing the area under the curve. So the area under the curve for is acceleration, would be change in velocity, and the area of velocity over time uh, would represent your displacement. All right, so here's another thing you might wanna take note of, which is the dot diagram. So being able to differentiate between um, the position of an object, whether it's speeding up or slowing down. So let's say you had like a motion camera that captured the position of an object um, every increment of seconds, like every one second. Um, so you need to be able to tell whether it's speeding up or slowing down. So the first example, you can see how it's speeding up because um, since it's going faster, right, um, in that same amount of time, when it takes that picture, um, the distance it travels is going to be greater. And in contrast, when it slows down, that distance is going to decrease.
Okay, so now we want to look at the kinematic equations, and these are the uniformly accelerated motion equations. And so you want to use these when the acceleration is constant. If acceleration isn't constant, what you can do is just break the problem apart to analyze it in parts where the acceleration is constant. So the first three here are on your reference table, um, but the two in green are not, and those would probably be helpful to memorize. Um, so what you'll find is that two and five are pretty similar in terms of uh, the content. The only difference is that the uh, initial velocity is swapped with the final velocity. Um, and to make up for that, instead of plus one half a t squared, it is minus one half a t squared. And another thing, thing to know about these uh, equations is basically if you have an unknown variable and you know the other three or two variables, then you can plug it in to solve for those. And that is sort of the basis of kinematics. And x in these examples can be interchangeable with y. It just shows the uh, plane that is being analyzed. And you'll see it in the practice problems. Now we want to look at free fall. So this is when you just throw an object into the air and then you want to analyze its motion. Or let's say you dropped a ball from a cliff. Um, so this is where the only force acting upon that object is the force of gravity. And we're ignoring air resistance. Um, and acceleration due to gravity on planet Earth is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. It really is 9.8 meters per second squared, but because it's acting downwards, it's negative little g. Um, so these are the motion graphs for it. You can see how, um, let's look at this first one where there is position over time. This is something that would be represented by, let's say you throwing a ball straight up and then it comes down. So you throw it straight up and then it reaches its apex and then comes down to its initial position. And the, the velocity over time graph you can see is where you give that ball a initial velocity, but then what happens is that since the only force acting upon it is negative g, right? That acceleration is gonna be, uh, sorry, that velocity is gonna be positive, but it's gonna be decreasing, right? Until it reaches zero, which is when it hits its apex, and then it's gonna go negative and start falling back down. And you can see how the areas are equal to each other. So this area right here is equivalent to this area right here, which shows the total change in displacement, which would be zero if the ball came back down to you. And then the acceleration due to gravity is the only force acting upon it, and that's why it's just a straight line in the negatives, which shows it's being affected by that um, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, so the other thing regarding free fall is up and down problems. And so we already talked about that symmetry that you're going to see, um, but there are two strategies you want to use when analyzing these problems. You can either analyze the whole motion, in which the displacement would be zero because it came back down. Um, the velocity just before landing is the negative of that initial velocity. And then the time is just the total time it took for the entire motion. Or you can just analyze just the up portion or just the down portion in which the uh, displacement would be max. The velocity would be zero since when it reaches its apex, that would just stop. Um, and then time is just half the time. All right, so the final thing we're going to cover is projectile motion in terms of kinematics. Um, so there are two types of projectiles. You're going to have angled projectiles and horizontal projectiles. So when it's angled, it's launched at an angle into the air. And when it's horizontal, it's just launched at 90 degrees flat, given an initial velocity as well. And that initial velocity is going to act um, in the x direction. Um, so these are a couple uh universal laws that would apply to these projectiles. So for the angled projectiles, um, what you're going to do is break that velocity into its component, right? Just like what we uh, said before, we want to break that initial velocity right here into its different components using trick. Um, so once we get those values, there are a couple ways to analyze it, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But now I want to look at the um, horizontal projectiles. So your initial uh, acceleration in the x direction would always just be zero, right? Because after you give it the initial velocity, um, there's nothing acting in the x direction since some of all the forces in the uh, x direction would be zero when it's in the air. However, the acceleration in the y direction would just be the force of gravity at negative little g. And another thing to note here is that when you give it a greater uh, velocity in the x direction, it would not affect the flight time. It only affects the displacement in the x direction. And the thing that affects time or flight time is the uh, velocity in the y direction. And so when you get comparison questions about how long it would take and things like that, 
or drawing graphs, that's something you want to take note of. Another thing is that time links the x plus y directions. And so when you draw your uh, times table like x and y in order to see what variables you're missing, what you can do is find time using one of the either x values or y values with the uniformly uh, accelerated motion graphs. And then you can use that to find um, the missing values for the other side in order to get your answer. Um, just a little uh, breakdown of the different ways you can analyze it. When this angled projectile comes back down to its initial uh, y position, like we said before with the up and down problems, the uh, final velocity would be the same as the initial velocity, but negative. Time is total time, and then the displacement would be zero. Now, when you want to analyze it as it goes to its max height, um, it reaches its apex, and so it's zero for a moment there in terms of velocity. Time is half the time and the displacement would be max. So that does it for the AP Physics 1 review for kinematics. Um, there are going to be some questions uh, linked above somewhere, so I would recommend you guys check it out. And thank you for watching.